That concludes our top 10 RV challenge, uh, our question challenge. And now we want to extend this challenge to two other channels. Okay. Our good friends, uh, The Art of RVing. Mark and Carrie. Mark and Carrie. And Dude RV. Dude, Dude RV. Dude, 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 Mike, Christy, hey, I appreciate y'all inviting me to take this little 10 question challenge. If y'all don't know who Mike and Christy are, you need to hop on over to the Sunset Seekers channel and check out what they're doing. Mike, he's, he's a fantastic editor their videos are very entertaining and informative they do a great job in their production and what they're doing so hop on over there and and, and show them some youtube love like y'all been showing the youtube love we're gonna we're gonna take this 10 question challenge i'm not gonna follow the same order that mike and christy did simply because I think there's a better flow. This is just my take on it. And you know, I have a different take on everything. The, the first question is that I'm gonna address is my favorite thing about RVing, the sense of adventure. If, if you've been following me, you know I, I, I'm a park hopper, man. I, I just like, I like going to different places and seeing things that I have never seen before. I, I want that new and exciting sensation. What's around the next bend? And, and that's really what excites me about RVing. You know, the, the peace and the relaxation is great, but more for me, it's, it's that sense of adventure. And as suburbanites, we, we really don't, don't get that too much anymore unless we step outside of our familiar comfort zone and do something. There is so much to see here in North America that Miss V can take me to see. I'm a poet and I know it. That's, that's really what I like about RV, the, the sense of adventure. So what's the, my least favorite thing about RV? I'm, that's the second question I'm going to tackle. And my answer to this question is going to make me sound like an old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> an old grouch, grouchy old man. Well, the, my, and a lot of people say it's the black tank. You know, if you don't want anything in it, don't put anything in it. If you don't want to dump it, don't use it. There's public toilets available. If you think those are, your black tank is nasty, well, just think about going into the public bathroom, those, those pit toilets. A lot of people say their least favorite thing is the end of the journey. Uh, for me, that's just a new beginning for the next journey. Yeah, I, I hate for the, 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 the adventure to be over, but man, I know that I'm gonna be back out in Miss V heading somewhere new uh, pretty quick anyway. So, so that's not it for me. My least favorite thing, and get ready. <laughs> I, I'm like, well, should I say this or, or not? But it's, it's other inconsiderate campers. Uh, it, it's the people that don't care about anything but their own self-serving gratification. I cannot tell you how many state and, and national park properties I've been to where there's litter scattered everywhere. Or, or the, the people down, two, to, two RVs down have got their, their music blasting so loud or their, their kids are just going nuts and running through everybody's campsite and People don't respect camp boundaries. They wander through right in the middle of your beautiful afternoon bird watching and they come strolling through your camp like, who cares? Uh, so I, I would have, and here I am sounding like an old fuddy, but I, I would have to say my, that's my least favorite thing about camping. It, it, is other inconsiderate campers. And I hope that hasn't offended any of, of any one of y'all. If, if you fall into that ca category, <laughs> you're probably not a subscriber. Uh, that's my take on it. 
Let's talk about a must-see destination. What is our number one must-see destination? Man, there are, the list is, is so long. We really want to get out and explore all of North America. Our burning desire is to journey up the Alcan Highway and, and visit Alaska. That's a several months long journey if you're gonna do it right. There's another one right there. We, we really wanna visit Utah because Utah has more national parks than any other state. Uh, after I finish knocking out all of the Texas state parks, I'm going to start knocking out national parks, but I really want to not you know, visit every one of those national parks, including Denali. All right, so the dozer's getting closer. Let's go inside for the next question. The deciding factor on choosing Ms. V, RV, our motor home, is the next question. Now, I've, I've got a nerve thing going on, uh, and every every camp it was an hour plus set up and then you had to reverse that process i really started embracing the park hopping get as many parks or not as many visit a number of parks on one outing that sense of adventure what's around the next bend where can we go next? And with that mentality, uh, the trailers were, were, were beating me down. Uh, so we had been, you know, cons had really wanted a drivable. After I had done a thousand floor plan videos, I kind of had the, the idea that we really wanted to be in a class C. Uh, for a number of reasons. And this particular Class C fit our desired needs extremely well. First off, there's, oh, there's 100 cubic foot of outside exterior storage. And inside, there's over, or right at 100, I think it's 101 cubic feet of storage. Now that's, a tremendous amount of story but the the main deciding factor was just just the, the layout uh, this is a very unique layout in class C's and it's more designed for two people versus a family we I have made some modifications it, it really fits our lifestyle there's just two of us and the, and the ratty pack and there's two of those so we have you know the king size master we now have the reclining love seat. It didn't come with this, but I installed that. Uh, we have storage for more storage than we'll ever use. We can work out at work and play out of this one floor plan. So it, it was really the, the storage and floor plan that was the deciding factor for this. The one thing that was unexpected when we purchased our Class C was that... <laughs> <laughs> and here I go. I'm, I'm going to sound like an old funny nutty again. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> what, what really was unexpected was the level of ignorance from the, from the people who sell and work on this particular RV. And, and what I mean by that is, is when we we're in the purchase process, I'm asking questions ab about the, the motor home. So I'm asking questions questions like, because uh, we were getting ready to drive to Big Ben. So well, what's the recommended PSI on the, ti the, the tires? And I was told 60 PSI. Uh, and and it, I should have known better, but I didn't bother to look at the sidewall of the tire. I went with the information provided and ran those ran that 60 PSI all the way to Big Ben and back. And when I got back, I'm cleaning the tires and I see that it's 80 PSI. So we drove all the way out there back on, on very low tires. Fortunately, we had no incident. Um, the slide, now we've got this big soup, one wall super slide. Uh, it has never been properly adjusted. 
and the, the dealership where we bought it, they swore that's just the way that it was made. We went to another one of their satellite dealerships here closer to get some stuff done, and those people were saying, oh, you know, this it's just a really crappy design, and the best way to, you want to open that slide before you level the motor home, which that went completely opposite of everything I've ever learned after having owned two RVs with slides. You, you, you get it level, and then you open the slides. Well, this dealer's saying you open the slide, and then you get it level and you reverse that exact process. Uh, and then there was an issue with the GFCI here in the, in the kitchen where it, it trips. For whatever reason, that ground fault interrupt circuit trips whenever we plug into shore power. I think it might have something to do with the transfer switch. I, I don't know. But when I requested that that be repaired by this dealership, the, the, the technician said, well, you just need to stop using your inverter. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> because the, the refrigerator's 110, and it's powered off the, the battery bank when we're not plugged in or running the generator. It's powered through an inverter. And he said that was the reason that the GFIC is tripping is because of the inverter. And the solution to the tripping GFIC was to not turn the inverter on. So, well, how are we supposed to operate the refrigerator when we're driving? He said, don't worry about it. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> are you serious? Uh, so what I did was I got under the counter and I switched the, the line and load so that the refrigerator was on the, the, the line side, not the load side. And if you don't know what that means, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. And that resolved the problem with the refrigerator shutting off. Now, we do still have to reset the GFIC to, run, to plug in the coffee maker, but at least we're not worried about the refrigerator being turned off as we're driving down the road. <sighs> so... That's, that's what really surprised me the most uh, when we purchased was just the level of ignorance from the people that are supposed to be in the know. So there you have it. I sound like an old buddy. <laughs> the number one thing that I would change about Miss V. Well, I've already made several changes. So, you know, it came, Miss V had an outdoor kitchen that I'm not a big fan of outdoor kitchens. So typically, they're just a, a waste of space because you know I, I have a little refrigerator and they may have a, a, a grill or a, a two burner stove or a microwave. And, and I don't get that because our outdoor kitchen had a microwave, a little microwave outside. I, I don't get that. I have a great big huge microwave in here. Why do I need a little one outside? It's not like we're gonna be cooking popcorn when we have a campfire, you know, you're camping. We can cook popcorn in here. So uh, the the outdoor kitchen was, was, in my opinion, just a waste of space. So I disassembled it and I, and I mounted a washer and dryer. Much better use of that space. Uh, so the I guess if I had the ability to do it and it, and it made financial sense, I would add a second air conditioning unit because you know we're here in Texas and I like to camp year round and in July and August it gets freaking hot and the one air conditioner is, is not enough. So the one thing that I would change, now there's, that would be number one priority. Num number two would be to replace the residential refrigerator with a two-way power or or something other than a 110 refrigerator because that 110 refrigerator has to be operated if unless you're plugged in you have to either run the generator or rely on the battery bank and when we bought the motor home the battery bank consisted of two 100 amp hour six volt 
flooded lead acid batteries and that actually powered the inverter refrigerator setup for I think we could get maybe three hours before the battery level dropped below 50% and on lead acid batteries you don't want to go below 50% uh, we've upgraded to larger AGM batteries and I think we can probably get maybe six hours eight possible out of the, the the batteries but the combination of the inverter and the 110 is just more draw than you really want without firing up the generator so air condition extra air conditioning number one and two-way power refrigerator freezer number two are the two things that I would I would change in this particular RV that kind of segues into the the next question which is the the wish list for the next RV and there, there's there's two of us <laughs> you know uh, and we've talked about this quite a bit because there's we love Miss V don't misunderstand we love this this RV uh, there are a couple of things that we would like to have different one is the the L-shaped dinette we find that's not to be as practical and usable as we thought a traditional dinette would be more practical we've learned um, but more in, in, important would be a different chassis and that different and the reason is the the econoline van chassis is brutal to drive if you've ever driven a u-haul truck on a on the with the van chassis you know what i mean now i've i've improved this one by changing the shocks and the steering damper and that that and made a huge difference and putting the air tabs on the back of the the body all of those improved the highway handling of the motor home but that van chassis is still uh, it, i'm six foot two and it doesn't fit so uh, it's just awkward it's not the most comfortable thing to drive uh, and although there's sufficient power it it never feels like you have enough power so our wish list would be moving into the same RV layout on the f550 chassis so the magnitude or the Omni um, they're pretty much the same RV, but it's built on that F550 diesel chassis. So there's more power uh, and you have the pickup front end, which is more comfortable for me to sit in and drive. Uh, and, you know, the diesel's got all the power you could ever want. With that being said, Yappy would like to have a bunkhouse model. Or not a bunkhouse, but a bunk model. Uh, so that we have the bunk space for the dog kennels because the ratty pack they're they're they live the luxury lifestyle their kennels are for medium-sized dogs so in conclusion to that question we would upgrade the chassis and possibly add bunks so that we've got a, a little additional space for the ratty pack um, but that would make it longer uh, I like shorter RVs. I don't like really long RVs. So we'll we'll see what what comes down the line. That's the answer for now. Diesel F550 chassis on the, with the same motorhome body. The next question: What is your favorite camping accessory? Man, that's a tough one. That because you know. <laughs> I've got some that I use on a on a regular basis from the the lawn chairs you know you, you got to have a chair to sit on but you don't actually because you can sit on the ground or, or you can sit on the if you're in a park you can sit at the picnic table having 
A lawn chair is a prerequisite, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's my favorite. When you're camping, you always have to have a campfire, right? So accessories around the campfire tend to be my favorite. Now you'd think that Little Red would be my favorite camping accessory, but that, that's a lifestyle accessory. This one comes close. Hold on, let, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you this. I found this, and if you're interested in one of these, you can, you can find this on, on Amazon through my influencer link. But this is actually a telescoping poker. How often have you needed to move a log or something and you had to go find a stick? Or you're using your hands or your, your foot trying to, well this, I love this because it doesn't take up a whole lot of room and it's, it's always ready to go. That's close to being perfect, but it's not my favorite. Hold on, we gotta change position. Next, the torch. Fastest, easiest way to start your campfire and your charcoal on the planet. This is close to being my favorite because I always have one of these with me. I have one at home for starting the campfire, one in the RV with extra bottles. That's close, but that's not quite it. Are you ready for it? Well, I've shown you what it's not here is my favorite camping accessory. <laughs> she goes, what is that, dude? Dude, what the heck is that? All right, this is an inflator. This is by Roybe. It's in the OnePlus system. And, and it's my favorite. I, I don't do a lot of inflating for blow up type stuff. Do you want to talk about getting a fire to burn? If you've got wet wood or you're in a hurry to get your charcoal burning or you just want to rekindle a fire, this will blow that fire up. It's just, <laughs> I, I carry Roybe uh, lanterns with me anyway. Ryobi, Ryobi, Roybe, however you say it. Ryobi. But this, this, I use it on my fireplace here at the house and I make sure it goes with me on every trip because you want to get a fire to burn, this is, <laughs> this will do it. So I know, it's, I'm just, I'm a weird dude, you know me. All right, on to the next question. Yeah, I realize there's some folks that have expectations that are about to be destroyed. So the next question, your favorite adult beverage. What is Dude RV's favorite adult beverage? <laughs> Get ready, here it comes. That's right, I'm a wino. I don't drink too much beer anymore, but I love some Apothic Crush. This is a smooth red blend and brother, there's no better way to end your camping day than with a bottle of smooth, uh, I mean a glass. <laughs> a glass of crush. And that ties in real well with the last question. And the last question is, the last question in the 10 question challenge is, what is your favorite camp food? And Mike said that his favorite camp food was hamburgers. And a lot of that had to do with just the, the old factory experience, the, the smell, the, the smell of the hamburgers cooking. Well, yeah, I get that. Uh, th there is something about the, the smell of the charcoal burning uh, and the fat from the hamburger dripping into the fire. I kind of get that, but I don't eat a whole lot of bread because it, it messes with me. So let's just cut out the, red, the bread and, and go straight to the cow. 
Now, there's, there's a lot of really good food that I really enjoy when I'm camping. Lo Wenzel's Lone Star Brats, you know I'm a big fan of those. Johnsonville Beer Brats, I just, I love the smell of them, the taste. Cooked over some charcoal, <clears throat> making me want one right now. But my number one all-time favorite thing to eat when I am camping, when I'm set up out in the wilds, or not necessarily in the wilds, but my favorite thing to eat, a Costco ribeye. Cannot beat that. Right there. That is the ultimate for me camp food and that is why I always close out any journey that I am on the last night. I want that to be the 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 coup de grace, the grand finale, if you will. A ribeye steak cooked on the charcoal. Man, making me want one right now. <laughs> I think I'm about to go thaw my ribeye. So that's that's my all-time favorite camp food. So there you have it. Dude RV's answer to the 10 RV question challenge. Now Mike and Christy referred to me as uh, the dude that's been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. I wish I could use that in my, in my video, but I'm sure it's copyright protected. But what they're talking about is the fact that I'm on a mission to visit every Texas state park. And of the 79, I've been to, oh, well, right. hold on. Let me give you a visual. Let's, let's do this. Mike and Christy referred to me as the guy that's been everywhere. Well, I, I haven't been everywhere, but I am on a mission to visit all of the 79 Texas state parks where you can take an RV. And to date, all these red dots, and to, to date, we have been to 55 Texas state parks. Uh, the green ones are where we have yet to go. And the blue ones are Corps of Engineer campgrounds that we've been to. So we haven't been everywhere, but we're working on it. And this is just Texas. On two other journeys, we've been outside of Texas and we can see that on the Google, I'm a Google Maps guide. So let's, here's a picture of that and all of the places that I've been to uh, and reviewed on Google Maps. And as you can see, we went out to North Carolina and back and up to Colorado Springs and back. So once again, I wanna extend my thanks and gratitude to Mike and Christy of the Sunset Seekers for inviting me to I guess play this game to make this video to answer these 10 questions and so it falls upon my shoulders to pass on this to someone else and I've given it some thought uh, there's a number of channels that I watch on a regular basis but there's there's two that came to mind for this challenge and the first one is Rick of going nowhere fast when I was planning my trip out to the Great Smoky Mountains and up the Blue Ridge Parkway, I, w I ran across his channel and I, I, I just really like the way he produces his content and I, I think it would be interesting to hear his answers because he, he, uses, he travels with an A-frame travel trailer. And uh, so I'd just like to hear his take on this. Uh, and the other channel that I want to, and, and I'll, I'm going to have a link to both of these channels down there in the description below so that you can go and check that, check out their answers. But the other, the other one that I want to pass this on to, a brand new channel and a brand new to the RV lifestyle. And if you've been following along, when I was down at Garner State Park, I met a young lady and her dog who have their channel and it is Petite HD. And I'd really like to hear her take on this since she's brand new to both YouTube 
and the RV lifestyle. So go click on the links below for both Rick and Petite HD and, and give them a subscribe and some love. And hey, as always, I am deeply honored that you're following along. If you've watched to this point, man, dude, thank you so much. I am, I am very grateful. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little silly production, give me one of those thumbs up and blast me out across social media. I would be eternally grateful for that. Click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss another episode of Dude RV. Most important, slap that bell as well. Hey, appreciate you watching. Y'all come back now. You hear? So there you have it, partner. Ten inches up, ten inches down. Careful when you call on the dude. Now I gotta jump on my steed and ride off.